Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is Video True Nerd, and welcome to Fallout 2. Oh, I have been looking forward to this. I have been meaning to get round to this one for so flipping long, and I think now is the perfect time to do it. You see, Fallout 2 occupies a very, very special place in the Fallout franchise. Considered by some to be the best Fallout game of all, the last Fallout game that could probably truly be called an RPG, first and foremost. After this point, the game started moving in more of an action RPG direction. The last Fallout game to be worked on by Black Isle, though as many of you will be aware, much of Black Isle's talent would go on to work at Obsidian, where they would actually go on to make New Vegas. So uh, this is also a game with a very, very close relationship to the other Fallout game that many people consider to be the best one, New Vegas itself. Such a fascinating, interesting game. And yet, I'd never got round to it previously. I played the original Fallout some time ago, made a full series of that, but I've never actually played Fallout 2. And yet I know some things about it, just because so much of it goes on to be important in future Fallout lore, Fallout New Vegas in particular. So, uh, I have a strange relationship to this game. I'm going to be having some nostalgia in reverse for this one. And that's why I felt that this moment right now was the right time to go back and play through Fallout 2 in full. Because Fallout is a franchise that has constantly been evolving and changing and experimenting. And I think that's good. I'd rather have it that way than have a franchise that eventually just ends up being stale and repetitive. And yet, if you're going to be constantly changing the franchise, there are going to be missteps. And it is certainly no exaggeration to say that some of the steps Bethesda have made very recently indeed have been somewhat controversial. So I felt that this was the right time to go back to real old school RPG Fallout and get stuck into some of that. So let's flip and go, shall we? And this being an old school Fallout game and this being a proper RPG, that means the first thing we need to do is build a character and... There was a lot to flipping do here. This was agonizing. Now, as I say, I've no idea how to build a good character in Fallout 2, but I did learn a lot while I was playing Fallout 1. And Fallout 2 is notoriously very similar to Fallout 1. There weren't a huge amount of changes. It took Fallout 1 as a solid foundation, and it built something bigger and better on top of it. But this screen is almost identical to the one in Fallout 1. So hopefully, if I take what I learned there, then we'll be good. And what I learned there is, this stand down here, yeah, agility, that's the one we're going to be wanting more of. Because, just in case you're completely new to this, I'll just kind of start everything from the beginning. This is a turn-based game, meaning agility determines action points. And action points determines uh, literally everything. When it comes to any form of combat, the amount of action points you've got determines how many things you can do during a given turn. So you're going to be wanting a lot of action points. Like all of the action points. Like, basically... Uh, I'll probably be wanting Agility 10, quite frankly. Agility 10 would probably be a very, very good idea. Because as you can see there on the right, as you make changes, it tells you what it actually means in real terms. So every point of Agility is an extra action point. So let's start that off at 9, because I might well be able to boost that with the optional traits down there as well. So we'll start that off nice and high and just start playing around. But the thing is, there's no stat that can just be very easily lowered. All of these stats are very, very important indeed. Strength, you do actually need a fair bit of strength, because just like in New Vegas, there are strength requirements to weapons. So you're not going to be wanting to lower that too much, otherwise you won't really be able to use many weapons particularly effectively. Perception, extremely important, because there's no manual aiming of guns in an isometric RPG Fallout. Perception is your chance to hit, very important. Endurance. Yeah, old Fallout was hard, by the way. Like, really hard. Like, you were very squishy and would die very easily. So, having low endurance, probably a bad idea. Charisma. Obviously, in the future, you could just lower charisma and then just compensate by taking tons and tons of speech. Yeah, in old Fallout, charisma determined how many companions you could be travelling with. And you really needed those companions to back up your firepower. Companions were extremely powerful. Intelligence, skill points and stuff it was, and luck tied to criticals, and criticals could be ludicrously powerful. So basically, I'd like every single one of these to be 10. That would just be great, but you're not allowed to do that, so let's figure out where we're going to make some compromises here. And another important thing, of course, yeah, perception also impacts sequence, i.e. how early on during the fight you get to have a turn. Very, very important indeed. Right, now, 
The all-important trait. Gifted was very, very strong back in Fallout 1. So yes, you have good innate abilities, but as a result, you haven't spent as much time honing your skills. So, special, up by one across the board. But, that means your derived skills are down a little bit, and you level up those skills a bit more slowly, because you get less skill points. It's probably still worth doing. So that boosts, yeah, agility straight up to 10, which is marvellous. Perception could be at 8, endurance at 7. That probably means I can reduce strength. I think 5 is fine for strength, so I'd rather actually, yeah, boost a little bit elsewhere. Hmm, how are we going to do this? Alright, this I think is one I'm going to settle on. So hopefully this is reasonable right here. Strength of 5 should let me use most weapons pretty well. Perception of 8 means once I start getting into guns, I'll actually be able to hit something. And yeah, low perception, you really bloody struggle. Endurance of 4 is reasonable. I'm not going to be that survivable, but hopefully that'll be fine. Charisma of 4 means I can actually bring around a handful of companions. Not that many, but you know, a few. Intelligence of 8, plenty of skill points, so I'll be able to offset the penalties I've already taken with Gifted right there. Agility of 10, I can do plenty during combat. Luck of 8, meaning I can get plenty of criticals. And uh, once you start getting some big criticals, shooting people right in the eyes, for example... Yeah, that can be very, very strong indeed. And I can take one more optional trait as well, I believe. Yeah, small frame means I can't carry as much, but I could be more agile. Okay, if I take that, am I not allowed to? Right, yeah, that's 11. How much is that? Oh, that's 40 less carry weight. No, I'll pass on that in that case. That's fine. Fast shot. You don't have time to aim because you attack faster than normal. Cost you one less action point for guns and thrown weapons. Now that, that is very tempting. Because if I could find, like, you know, a pistol that was three action points per shot normally, that would be two action points per shot for me, then I could fire that five times in a single round. That'd be really, really nice, actually. That'd be flipping lovely. But I don't know how much accuracy that costs me. I'm going to guess it's quite a flipping lot, so... Yeah, basically getting, like, one or two more shots, and if you're not hitting with them, no, we can probably do without that. Good-natured, I am tempted by. Because the thing is, just like in New Vegas, I think you gain more than you lose. Like, how many combat skills are you really going to want to level up in a Fallout game? Probably not more than two. First aid, doctor, speech, and barter. That's tempting. Because that's actually... How much is that up? Hang on, that is... Uh, Hang on, where's Barter? Why is it not an alphabetical? It should be an alphabetical. Okay, so that's 15% up for those four skills. Meanwhile, I'm actually only losing... Hang on, small guns. I'm losing 10%. So basically, I'm sacrificing probably about 20% to gain about 60%. Doctor's not the most useful skill, but first aid is decent. Speech is, to my mind, really good, because I like trying to speech my way through problems when I can. Barter is okay. If science were included, that'd be great. I'm not 100% sure on this one. Screw it, I'll take it. I've got decent perception and good agility. If I'm a little bit weaker for my first couple of levels, uh, that'll be fine. And as for my tag skills, speech is an obvious one for me up to 45. Small guns as well, because yeah, basically that's just about everything. Rifles, all sorts of things. And then... Uh, I'm tempted by lockpick. There's plenty of lockpicking to be done in Fallout 1. Okay, I think I'm pretty happy with that. In the end, we're looking at a character with high evasion, lots of action points. I can do a lot during a fight. And with high sequence, I get to attack nice and early on. However, I don't heal up particularly well. If I actually have to use melee, I am in a lot of trouble. Yeah, radiation resistance, poison resistance, both poor. So, we're flimsy in some ways, but if I can just get my character set up correctly, get a couple of levels under my belt, get a decent pistol, we'll be good. Let's flip and go. War. War never changes. The end of the world occurred pretty much as we had predicted. Too many humans, not enough space or resources to go around. The details are trivial and pointless. The reasons, as always, purely human ones. The Earth was nearly wiped clean of life. A great cleansing, an atomic spark struck by human hands, 
quickly raged out of control. Spears of nuclear fire rained from the skies. Continents were swallowed in flames and fell beneath the boiling oceans. Humanity was almost extinguished, their spirits becoming part of the background radiation that blanketed the Earth. A quiet darkness fell across the planet, lasting many years. Few survived the devastation. Some had been fortunate enough to reach safety, taking shelter in great underground vaults. When the great darkness passed, these vaults opened, and their inhabitants emerged to begin their lives again. One of the northern tribes claims they are descended from one such vault. They hold that their founder and ancestor, one known as the Vault Dweller, once saved the world from a great evil. According to their legend, this evil arose in the far south. It corrupted all it touched, twisting men inside, turning them into beasts. Only through the bravery of this Vault Dweller was the evil destroyed. But in so doing, he lost many of his friends and suffered greatly, sacrificing much of himself to save the world. When at last he returned to the home he had fought so hard to protect, he was cast out, exiled. In confronting that which they feared, he had become something else in their eyes and no longer their champion. Forsaken by his people, he strode into the wasteland. He traveled far to the north, until he came to the Great Canyons. There he founded a small village, Arroyo, where he lived out the rest of his years. And so, for a generation since its founding, Arroyo has lived in peace, its canyons sheltering it from the outside world. It is home. Your home. But the scars left by the war have not yet healed, and the Earth has not forgotten. Come in, Chosen One. There are things you must know. The village is dying. The signs are everywhere. Withering crops. Dying Brahmin. Sick children. There is hope, however. A slim hope. That few know of. The old discs speak of an item called the Garden of Eden Creation Kit. It is said it can bring life to the wasteland. This will be your quest, if you prove yourself worthy. For that proof, you must first journey to the Temple of Trials. If you survive, come back to me. We will talk more. Our life is in your hands, Chosen One. Prove yourself. Find the Gek. Be our salvation. And here we are in front of the Temple of Trials. And if you're curious, by the way, fun little bit of lore, the reason why they mentioned that the Vault Dweller had such a bad time in Fallout 1 is... Officially, canonically, basically all your companions are supposed to have died during Fallout 1. Like, Ian is supposed to have been burnt to death before you even get the water chip. So yeah, for the Vault Dweller, it was a bit of a brutal experience. Dear oh flippin' dear. But more importantly, welcome to Fallout 2! So, this is how old Fallout works. Let me just give you the once-over in case you're unfamiliar with this. So this is a top-down, isometric RPG type thing. Where basically you interact with the world by moving the cursor around and actually moving it between a couple of different modes. So for example, when I move it into movement mode, then I can move to whichever hex I tell my character to go to. So I just tell them to go over there, they go over there, diddly diddly d. Alternatively, I right click and then we go into looking at things mode. So for example, there's a person over here, hover over him, and it tells me, hey, that's Clint. He's a fellow tribesman. He's standing next to a patch of rocks. And then if you click on that thing, it'll give you a bit more information. So you can learn a lot more about the world that way. So a very large pile of rocks, they look dangerous just sitting there like that. And is that a skull thing by any chance? Yes, that's a skull pole. A pole with human skulls attached. 
Obviously, the rocks look dangerous to me. Bunch of skulls attached to a pole? No, that's just everyday business. Now, speaking of Clint, as we hover over him, you can see the little mouth icon, meaning we can go and have a chat to him. Lovely. Good day to you, John. You have not yet completed the trial of the Elder, and thus may not pass. And... Uh, I'd like to go back to the village because I think I forgot to like put on my armor or whatever because I clearly have shown up in like some pants and a little fur bra. Not a very good idea. And forgive me, John, I cannot allow you to pass. If you wish to return to the village, you may do so only by passing the trial set before you by the village elder. Dear, oh flipping dear, I could kick your ass and just walk out of here. Well, can I ask you some questions at least, Clint? Forgive me, but I have no answers to your questions. Take the trial set before you by the elder and prove yourself worthy to lead our people. So yes, this is how conversations were actually handled back in these days. Basically, you just had little dialogue trees that came up through windows like this. Certain important characters would actually have voice acting and animated faces and stuff, but that was only rare important characters. Clint is not important enough to justify voice acting and a little animated face. Oh, in case you're wondering why this looks a little bit different to my Fallout 1 series, by the way, my Fallout 1 series, I decided to record that in 720p resolution because I felt like that was a good balance between, like, you know, the size of the screen and the size of the text. But looking back at it, I feel like the text was a bit small and difficult to read, given not everyone's going to be looking at this in, like, you know, a big full screen monitor or whatever. For people watching this on smaller screens, I thought it would be better if the text were a bit larger. So this time I'm playing in 1080p, but with 2xUI scaling applied, so the text should be a lot more readable. So hopefully that's a lot easier for you. Anyway, that's enough faffing about. Time to get into the Temple of Trials and actually do whatever the trial in question is. Like, you know, they were a bit vague, to be honest. Just go into the Temple of Trials, do something. Uh, check inventory. Aha! Weapon! Good. And if you want to know more about that particular weapon, then you can just, yeah, actually uh, look at that. Go into kind of observation -y mode. Click on it for a bit more information. So razor tip polearm. The shaft is wooden and the tip is worked steel. And yeah, you need a strength of four to use that correctly. Weighs four pounds. Lovely. And yes, we've got a damage range of three to 11 with this old girl. So yeah, back in these days, the amount of damage a weapon could do could be crazy. Because this was like, you know, a proper old school tabletop RPG in video game form. So basically, there's a lot of dice rolling going on in the background. And the damage ranges can be fairly extreme. And in we go to the temple. The shadows seem to play tricks with your eyes, and you can hear the faint sound of movement, because we have got some giant ants up ahead. Now, let's talk about a fun little thing about Fallout 2, which is, despite being by many people regarded as the best, most classic, most wonderful of all Fallout games, it's also generally widely regarded as having the worst opening of any Fallout game. The Temple of Trolls seems to be widely regarded as being absolutely, utterly terrible, so that's fun. <laughs> Never played it before, we'll see if I come to the same opinion. And this will be an excellent opportunity to just introduce a little bit of combat. Because we need to go up and murder ourselves some. You're ants, aren't you? You ants, hang on, hover over it. Yes, you see a giant ant. Probably don't go over and say hello. I'm guessing the giant ant isn't actually going to be, you know, particularly friendly. So there's two of them. Head over here. Just kind of, you know, get a bit of distance between me and the other one so I can fight them one at a time. And now we enter turn-based combat. And at this point, the action points start controlling everything. Those are the little green blobs above my weapon selector thingy, right down over there. And they determine literally flipping everything. So if I want to move over to that ant, it's going to cost me one action point per hex to get close to him. But as I've only got a melee weapon, I kind of need to do that. So one, two, three, four, we run over there. We're now in a position to launch an attack on that ant. Marvellous. Now, the problem is I'm not actually very good at melee weapons, so this might take a little bit of doing. I've only got a 26% chance to hit the bastard, so give it a go, and unfortunately, the ant manages to evade that. I don't really have the ability to do anything else, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to back off so the ant gets less chance to attack me back, because he'll have to waste some of his action points following me to chase me down. So one, two, end of my turn right there. The ant didn't bother following me. All right, then back over to the ant. In which case, yes, this round I'll actually have two chances to attack. Because now I've actually got eight action points remaining. But uh, yeah, I'm not exactly a melee specialist. Kind of hoping we get a gun sooner rather than later. Because uh, I'm not very good at this. Yeah, in classic Fallout, get used to seeing you missed a lot. You missed is possibly the most common bit of dialogue you're going to see in the whole game. There we go. I finally got a flipping hit it. 
Yay, I successfully killed one ant. Marvellous. So as the other enemy hasn't actually seen me, I can officially end the combat. Job flipping done. Get myself a little bit of XP for that. Lovely. Does the ant actually have anything on him, by the way? No, that's just an ant corpse. He doesn't have any loot on him. Oh, the other ant has unfortunately seen me, so we need to take you out as well. So, so far, I've just been doing a thrust. But you have options in this game. So a basic thrust is the lowest possible use of AP. If, however, I right-click here, I go into Aim Shot, basically the predecessor of VATS. And now I get to choose where I want to try and strike the ant, all of those numbers being percentage chance to hit. Now, unfortunately, I'm terrible at melee. So for the time being, I'm not likely to actually be able to make any of these hits whatsoever. So don't worry about that. The spear also seems to come with, yeah, I can throw it, but I'm not sure if that's like a one-time only thing. So let's not do that. What I can, however, do is go over to my secondary weapon. You can have two weapons set at once. You can change between them for free. If you want to go over to anything else in your infantry, however, you need to actually go into your infantry, which costs AP. Fun system. Very, very good indeed. So we've also got a strong kick, or, yeah, just a strong kick, but aimed. Now, just in theory, how likely to hit is... Aha! The kick is actually a little bit more likely to hit. So we should probably just go for the kick, because that is, yeah, 30% right there. And would you believe we missed... Back off a little bit, back off from the ant, though sometimes I will get two turns in a row because of my high sequence, which is very, very good indeed. So, 31, and you missed. You missed again, obviously. I've also just remembered that my unarmed attacks only do one hit point, so probably I should just go back over to the spear. Even though it's actually less likely to hit, at the bare minimum, it does let me kill this thing in one go. So, sooner or later I'll hit you, it'll be great. I'm down to four hit points, and I cannot hit this ant. I think I may have just learned a very, very... Oh, I'm down to one hit point. The ant is much better at hitting me than I am at hitting the ant. Go! Take out the... Okay, so I'm basically dead at this point. I think I've just learned a very valuable lesson right here, which is good-natured was a mistake. In a world where you have to stab ants in the face, it's a mistake to be good-natured. Because these were the most basic enemies in the entire game, the first enemies we ran into. Right, I'm just going to make some quick changes to the character. Okay, so this iteration of John is very similar, except this time, rather than being good-natured, she's sexy. So that should be better. Okay, 36% chance to hit with the spear. That's better. It's still not good, but it's better. Okay, now this, this is better. I have successfully managed to take out the two ants in the first room in the game and only lost a quarter of my entire health bar, which is still worrying and terrible. But okay, I'm just hoping we find something a little bit better to fight with soon. That'll be fine. Bear in mind, we have skills such as, yay, first aid. So I can first aid myself up a little bit. Just, you know, bandage up my wounds. Makes time pass. Excuse me, what happened to... I failed to do any healing. Absolutely flipping marvellous. Okay, so that didn't work. Yeah, that's a thing you could try and do to, you know, make yourself a little bit better. Sacrificing time in order to actually get some health back. But apparently I'm so terrible at it I can't. Right, good. This is all going well so far then. Alright, tinker with the door. Move on forward. Keep an eye out for where everything actually is. So yeah, I can see... I think that's a bunch of ants over there. We've got something. Ah. There is a pot, and because that hand icon's there, that means get to that pot, there's possibly something inside the pot. Okay, could potentially be of interest. Over here, meanwhile, we've got... Ooh, scorpions. Not so keen on that, to be honest. Not sure I'm really uh, ready to deal with scorpions. I'm struggling with ants, and I feel like scorpions are a step up. Alternatively, if we just actually look see north over here... We've got ourselves uh, more rooms, some bones over there. But then again, a corpse did give you your first gun in Fallout 1. So possibly worth finding my way over there. I'm not sure. Maybe what I need to do is sneak. If I were to sneak up on an ant, maybe I could get a sneak attack critical on it. Yeah, sneak up. I can't see where the ant is. The ant's hidden over here and you can't spin the camera around. The camera is always just in one position. There's no way to get that camera around. So I know there's an ant behind this wall. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Prepare to sneak. 
Prepare to sneak, prepare to sneak, prepare to sneak, and go. Oh, I think the, the other ant saw me. Oh, now I'm taking on two ants at the same time. Oh, now I'm super boned. Right, go for the hit. Am I more likely to hit the other one? No, the other one's out of range. Right, back away, back away. Run away from the ants at this point. Just run away. In fact, do I want to run away? Yeah, sorry, I forget. I actually get uh, two things at the beginning. Right, get a couple of hits in. 31, 31. Okay, one of them's dead. One of them is dead at this point. Oh, I'm back to sneaking. Technically, I think that ant hasn't realized I'm here yet. Okay, that's good. No, maybe. Okay, now the ant knows I'm there. Continue trying to stab... Eventually, me and the ant will successfully be able to kill one another. There we go. Ant goes down. Now, end combat. That other ant doesn't actually know I'm here yet. So I might be able to... Yeah, sneak up. Yeah, there we go. Sneak up on other ant. I think I'm coming up behind it. Nope, the other ant saw me coming. But it's going to waste its turn coming over to me. So I can start getting my beautiful attacks in. Oh, yeah. Now, now we're starting to get into this. And yeah, that was actually uh, 10 hit points damage. So yeah, the damage range can be really large. That one I did 10 hit points in one go. So it might take one hit to knock out an ant. It might take two hits to knock out an ant. If you're really unlucky, it could take like three hits to knock out an ant. I don't know how many hit points they've got, but it feels like it's about three or four or something. So uh, yeah, if you get unlucky, it might take multiple hits. But if you get lucky, could be one. I'm not sure if luck affects damage range, actually. I don't know. Anyway, that pot I actually came here for. Have a little look-see inside that. And what have we got? We have got ourselves... I don't know what that is. Healing powder. And if I want more details, it's healing powder, apparently. Can you give me more information, please? Uh, powerful healing magic that will bring the feeling of sleep to your head. Okay, we might just need that anyway, because apparently I'm terrible at first aid. Okay, next up, the scorpions. And if you ever need to know where enemies are, yeah, just actually activate combat just for a moment and the game will show you some outlines. And then you can immediately just end the combat afterwards. So I know one scorpion is close by to me, one is not. So if I just come over here, this scorpion will start wandering in my direction. Looks to me like the scorpion has quite a bit more in the way of movement points. I'm just going to actually back off and lead him... Away from his friend. End my turn over there. And... Okay, end my second turn as well. Here he comes. Uh, I'd rather, you know, fight him where I can actually figure out where he bloody well is. And looks like if I just go... Yeah, it's a little bit further. I want him to waste his turn coming at me. Because I don't have any antidotes or anything. If he poisons me, I'm very boned. Alright, this is what I wanted to say. Take one step towards him. Go into fighty mode. 32% chance to hit and miss. Miss again. Right, begin running. Begin running. That scorpion's going to murder me. Oh, yeah. Okay, that's only four hit points. That's not so bad. Stab. Continue stabbing. Oh, I'm so terrible at spears. Luckily, the scorpion seems to be pretty flimsy and not have a brilliant damage range on it. It seems to be able to do, yeah, as little as one hit point sometimes. Oh, come on. I've missed four times in a row. That's just unlikely. There we go. All right. One good hit. We'll do the job there. That was a lesser scorpion. That thing gets killed. I was actually right at the top of my damage roll right there. I don't know how much health it's got, but it's definitely worth a few XP. In fact, hang on. Go over to my character. You can check how many XP you need for your next level up. So I'm at 185. You need 1,000. Oh, bloody hell. I feel like now might be the right time for, yeah, the healing powder. So use that, please. There we go. That's good. So I've managed to actually heal up my hit points, but I am down one perception, which I probably didn't need, to be honest. I was struggling to hit everything already. All right, here we go. I need the flipping XP here. So if Scorpion number two would like to head in this direction, and then we could just get lucky on both the hit... And the damage range, that'd just be flipping marvellous all round. You just keep heading in this direction. Always forget I shouldn't do that, because yeah, I seem to get two turns in a row right at the beginning against these bugs. So this probably works right here. One, two, stabby stab. 32% miss. 32% also miss. Now I get hit. And also I've been poisoned. Right, now, now I'm in trouble. That was only three hit points. 
Okay, now we can check how it's doing. He's wounded, but that doesn't mean very wounded. So he could potentially take another hit and still carry on. I could be in trouble here. Right, begin operation run away. I am poisoned. I'm taking five hit points. That's that's not nothing. Stab. Okay, hit it again. That was for... Wow, okay, that was for six. So I've done like nine hit points total to it, and it's still going. I feel like I should not be messing with scorpions, actually. I feel like scorpions are going to mess me up. And there we go. It finally goes down. I got a nine damage roll at the end there, which is good. But I'm also poisoned. How does poison work again in this game? I can't remember. Your character has been poisoned. Poison will do damage over a period of time until cured or it passes from your system. Okay, can I by any chance use doctor or first aid to sort that out? No, doctor's just for crippled limbs and major wounds. Meanwhile, first aid is small cuts, abrasions and other minor ills. Okay, that's, that's not so good. I mean... I'll give it a go. It's not been working so far. Up to my skill decks, up to first aid, and you can't do that in combat. Oops, sorry, need to end the combat. End combat, skill decks, first aid, and probably completely fail. No, actually, I feel a little bit better, apparently. And also, a giant ant has triggered a trap and narrowly avoided a projectile. Oh, great, there's traps in here, too. That's just marvellous. My trap skill, by the way, is 17%, so... <laughs> oh dear. Oh flipping dear. Yeah, I can see the advantage of Gifted, but I'm also really, really feeling the pain from having every single one of my abilities being artificially lowered by it. Yes. Okay, maybe what I want to do is, like, not cause trouble. Because there's a scorpion right there, and... Actually, it's just one scorpion. And then there's this big room at the end here. I don't really know what else is going on in this big room at the end here. It feels like there's got to be something in there, right? I mean, I'm already poisoned. How much more can that scorpion really do to me when you think about it? Okay, scorpion coming in. I've probably got a couple of turns right now, so I do have the opportunity... Ooh, 37. Okay, that was good. And seven straight away. Unfortunately, yeah, I can't do anything with three. Actually, I can. Go over to my... No, strong kick's also four. I was kind of hoping that'd be three. Fine, end my turn, but hopefully get another... Yes, get another turn immediately. So now I get another two goes. This is the advantage of my high perception. And I am getting pretty good at killing some scorpions, actually. Yes. And I think... I don't see... No, there's... Oh, hang on. Yes, there is. There are... Oh, there are... There are two scorpions down over there. Right, I thought that was actually a lot. Okay. Well, at the bare minimum, I can head up and explore this side of the room. I get half the room. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, there's definitely something going on with those bones. Those bones have investigate on them. Okay, where exactly are the scorpions? If I could just take out, like, one scorpion and then just go and grab the bones, yeah, I could probably pull that off. Okay, let's just head over here. Draw the attention of one scorpion. One scorpion is... Come on. Come on, little scorpion. Come on. Come on. There we go. One scorpion comes in this direction. I'm going to lead him off over this way just to make sure his friend doesn't get involved. And apparently this scorpion is hard to hit. Ooh. I don't know why, but this scorpion is apparently nastier. And I'm losing health really fast. 32%. Ah, I think I was actually one further away. This thing's got a range of two, not of one. So yeah, it's got worse accuracy, but you're a tiny bit safer if you're attacked from a distance. Keep going. Okay, that was good. Hit points down to bloody hell, hit points down to 11. And I have no way of healing myself and I poisoned. <laughs> bloody hell. Yeah, old Fallout wasn't joking about, by the way. Okay, activate sneak mode. We just go over here and we get the bones. Okay, go and grab whatever this is. And the answer is, were they bones? Were the bones literally bones? No, it was a spear. Except, like, it's exactly the same spear I've already got. I don't feel like I need to. Oh, aside from the fact this does let me do a throw, because now I've got a spare. Okay, now, now get the hell out of here. Do not, do not fight the other scorpion. All right, let's just get the hell out. 
Yep, they are completely identical. So I'm guessing that that there was the bones of the last chosen one. It might just be a title they've given to a fair few mugs. Right, back over to the main door. Have a little look-see at it. I see a door. In which case, just go over to it. Give it a bit of a tinker. And the door appears to be locked. Ooh. Okay. Interesting. Uh, examine the surrounding area. Because the door is locked, there might be a mechanism. Or I might just be, yeah, lockpicking. No, I'm good at lockpicking. So I definitely picked the lock. It turns out I am brilliant at lockpicking. Not so good at spears, which is unfortunate. Because the Temple of Trolls seems to be mainly a question of can you stab bugs with a spear? Alright, next area. What do we have? Oh, good. It's more flipping scorpions. But that looks distinctly like, is that a treasure chest? That looks very much like a treasure chest to me. Okay, so we've got a treasure chest. We have got a big spiky sculpture thing. Do we know what that actually is? It's a chasm. I was more interested in the thing in the chasm, but okay. And yep, that's just a chasm. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's just a thing that doesn't have anything in it. That's how chasms work. And there's a big ass door over there. And then, okay, more chests. Right, optional bad guys. It would be nice to kill them and get, like, all of the stuff. How many actual bad guys are we talking about, by the way? We're talking... That's one bug over there. There's... I know I saw a flipping scorpion over there. Possibly you can't actually see enemies that are out of range when you just actually activate the combat thing. Yeah, that makes sense. It needs to actually be, like, either in range or in vision or something. I'm down to 11 hit points. I have no way of healing and I'm poisoned. I am so super boned. Okay, this is going to be fun. This is going to be very fun. Because now I want those chests. And I don't know how I'm going to get hold of them. Oh, uh-oh, 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 uh oh What? I just saw that. A raised plate. Hang on. What? What's going on here? What are these plates for? Yeah. What does this do? I feel like I'm about to die. And you see a raised stone plate. Should I just maybe, like, not touch these? Are these, like, the trap plates? Yep. I continue to see a raised stone plate. Did I do anything with them? Ah, do I need to use my trap skill on this? Yeah, activate trap skill. You failed to disarm the trap. Okay. In which case, just don't stand on them. Okay, there's... Oh, there's a scorpion. Are the scorpion and the ants friends? I don't know whether the scorpions and the ants are technically friends or not. They seem to be friends. Oh, this is going to be good. Right, ideally, draw the attention of one, but not both of them. So, how about you guys? Yeah, you just come over here. Alright, walk straight at me, and then I'll just come at you, and I should have, if I'm lucky, one, two, three, four. Okay, I can get over to you in four. Then I can get in one hit... End my turn, and I should be able to then get two more hits on you. So, I do have three shots at this. This is 37%. Yep, yeah, that's not bad at all. So, that's seven hit points. Not bad. End turn. Should get another one immediately. 32. And not bad. Not bad at all. Back off. And I think technically that ant might still be... No, the ant has not seen me yet. Beautiful. Oh, never mind. The ant definitely saw me and then got a hit in. But it was a really light hit. Okay, go for the attack. Go for another attack. Dead instantly. Good. And I've only just realised, uh, apparently, the scorpions do potentially have some loot on them. Because there's a little hand icon. So in which case, what have you got on you? You've got yourself a tail. What do we know about that? Give it a little looksy. Give me some information. Severed tail of a small rad scorpion. Okay, I'm guessing it's just got some value. We'll just take it with us, sell it later. Observation. That there rad scorpion appears to be on the far side of the room from the chest. If I go into sneak mode, I might be able to get in, empty the chest and leave without him ever knowing I was there. Probably worth doing given I've only got 10 hit points. Right, activate sneaky mode. Keep your distance. Looks like he's heading to that side of the room, which I consider positive, so head up into this corner. All right, now, there we... No, why did you stop sneaking? Continue sneaking. We are supposed to be sneaking right now. Get over here. 
Okay, now, what do we have in the chest? And healing powder. Well, I need that to not die. So now, we just sneak the hell back out of here. And we don't fight the scorpion. We don't need to fight every scorpion. Not until we found a gun. When I've got a gun, we can come back and fight all of the scorpions. I'm on about 30% health right now. I tell you what, actually, I should fight that scorpion and then use the healing powder because it seems to be pretty much a full health top up for me because I've not got much health. Right, he's walking away right now. Let's see if we can actually sneak up on him and boom! Who gets the first hit in? I think I do, but I'm at a range of, yeah, two. So take one step, I can still get two hits in. 37%. 37% and a hit. And, oh, okay. Got very lucky there. Killed in one go. So I'm guessing they have 10 hit points. It feels like if I get like 10 or 11, I one-shot them. Good. In which case, uh, I don't have the action points. End combat. Actually scavenge his body for more tails, because why not? Beautiful. In fact, actually check my inventory. I think you get the value there. So, severed tail of a small rad scorpion. No, no clue. I'm guessing it's just worth something. Now, it looks to me like what we've got up ahead is ants, who have very, very low damage range. So, shouldn't be too difficult to just smash our way through all of them, to be honest. I say not too difficult. If I get unlucky, I'll be absolutely torn apart, but screw it. Maybe I want to fight one or two more ants before I use the healing powder, because I feel like this ain't done yet. All right, whatever's through the metal door, it's probably bad. Also, I am taking damage from the poison. That is just happening. Okay, I'm down to nine hit points. This is... This is a mistake, isn't it? Actually, you know what? I'll take on one of them. I'll take on one of them. Oh, he's walking away. Get behind him, 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 and go! There we go. Successfully snuck up on you! And you just get yourself murdered. Right, walk away from the other one before he realises anything's up. And combat is over. Now, we just try and sneak up on that one. Just wait for him to move, because they seem to move on the regular. So just wait for him to be in a position where we can sneak up on him, and that'll do. Right, go, 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 go. No, don't walk that way! You know what? It'll flip it do. And stab. Stab. And unfortunately, that's only four hit points. They must have like five or six or something. Uh, in which case, end your turn. I think we get another attack immediately. Nope, he gets an attack in. I'm down to five hit points. We really need to finish him off. Okay, he's dead. That's, that's good. That's good. Into chest number two. Ideally, more health would be absolutely spot on. Because I'm terrible at everything. And hello, we've got ourselves... Oh, that is anti-venom. That I know about. Yep, lovely. So, we just grab that, and I can cure the poison. Good. Now this, this is good stuff. You know what? It's time for a bit of R&R, &R, all right? It's time for me to actually use this here lovely poison, sort out the poison situation, and it's time for me to use this lovely healing powder too. And that gets me up to not quite full health. Fine, it's like 20 hit points or something. 18, it says right there. Okay. This is fine. This is fine. And I've also learned the advantage of sneaking. Sneaking definitely seems like a good sort of thing to do. Yes. That ant is walking away. And right behind it. And go. Going for the attack. Oh, it saw me first. I got a flippin' four hit point attack in. Just got sucker punched by an ant. It's just flippin' embarrassing. Right, okay. End my turn because I should get a second one immediately. Oh, the other ant knows what's coming. That is... That's no good. Right. Stab, and he's... Okay, that ant is apparently very, very resilient. I think I should be about good where I am. Maybe I'll take one step backwards, uh, end my turn there. That ant will then walk over to... Darn it, I got another two turns in a row. Anytime you're... Excuse me, would you like to... Excuse me. Are you interested in... Okay, that ant is apparently just not actually interested in me in the slightest. I didn't realise that. Oh, now he's interested. <laughs> Because of course he is. That's fine. Actually, he's just walked into like the perfect spot, which is 36%. And a nice lucky kill with 10 hit points there. Neither of you have got anything on you. Nope, we're good. In which case, 
Time to see what's going on with the metal door. I'm really ha- uh oh. What? Oh, never mind. Sorry, that was just the end of the combat. That was just the end of the combat. I forgot to end it previously. Right, over to here. Let's have a little look see at the metal door, please. So, what do we know about the metal door? You see impenetrable door. And I cannot do anything to impenetrable door. So, let's try lock picking it. Just because, you know, it's a door. And... Apparently, I neither succeeded nor failed. Maybe that's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, what are we supposed to be doing with the impenetrable door then? Alright, quick scan of the nearby sconces, walls, items, doesn't reveal anything. Do you maybe want me to attack the door? Nope, the door is not a viable target for an attack either. Okay, there are a few items I walk straight past. Let's actually see what we've got going on here. So, for example, there's a pot in this hallway that I totally ignored. This better not have... Oh, hello. Plastic explosives. Okay, a chunk of Cordex, a military brand of plastic explosives, highly stable, very destructive, includes a timer. I really feel like I shouldn't be blowing up the Temple of Trials. Like, what if someone else needs to have their worth tested down the line? Like, what are they gonna do? And I suppose technically it's my only option. Right, so let's just actually set that as item number two. I guess we're using that. I mean... That feels like that shouldn't be the only solution, because what happens if you, like, you know, use that to blow up a scorpion or something? Then this dungeon would be uncompletable. Maybe the pot just spawns more plastic explosives. Who flipping knows? Alright, go over to plastic explosives. Use plastic explosives. Yep, that's all I can do. I can just use it. So, set a timer for 30 seconds should probably be fine. Uh, so, set timer. You see metal door. Wait, where's the... So I just, oh, I just left it there. Okay, I just left it on the ground. Um, how far away do I want to be from that? No, do not go back over to plastic explosives. I mean, I did... Okay, good. Job flipping done. That was exactly what I needed to do. I wonder what happens if you lay that incorrectly. You just have to go back to an old safe. <laughs> have you just screwed destiny? Quite possibly you have. Oh, bloody hell, there's more of it. Also, apparently, there was a raised plate and I almost got hit by a trap again. Okay. What do we have over here? We've got... Ooh. That looks important. Hello. Who are you? That's Cameron, a fellow tribesman. Right, that might be the Skyrim door to get out of here. So, before we head in that direction, check out this way first. This way leads more chests. Now, the problem is, if the chest doesn't give me anything but items to heal up my health, I might end up in a health deficit trying to go and get the items. Also, apparently the explosive went off prematurely because I'm so inept at explosive, so that's good. Looks like we've got at least two scorpions between me and there. And now I don't have any more antivenom. I've used up my only antivenom. Meanwhile, if I go this way, there's like... There's two ants and a chest. The chest might give me better weapons or armor. So let's actually start going in that direction. We'll take out the ants first, and then we'll go and check out the scorpions. Right, ants number one. Stab and... Okay, apparently I can't stab. Right, end turn. Please give me second turn in a row. Thank you. Ant immediately dies. Next ant, please. Yeah, just run over to it, get its attention. Make it waste its action points walking over towards me. Oh, and a good first hit there. I am getting well practiced at annihilating ants. Spot on. Right, in which case, uh, tell me, what do we have in the chest? Because if it's actually more anti-venom, then there's literally nothing in the chest. Oh, great. I'm glad that was there. Wait, hang on. Cameron, did you just maybe steal what was in the chest? Because if so, I flipping want it, alright? My character's about two-thirds of the way to level two. If I could get up to level 2 before the end of this, I won't have enough off, yeah, scorpions over there to get up to level 2. But just in case, yeah, Cameron's got like a tough speech check or something, would be nice to hit level 2 if I could. Let's just, yeah, scout ahead here, figure out what's actually here, because I think it's just two scorpions. So, if it is, if I get lucky, I should be able to take all of them out without too much trouble. Plus, if there's a healing item in that chest, then if I take some damage on the scorpions, I'll probably end up for the good, which is good in case it's a fight against Cameron. 
Alright, Scorpion number one comes in and ideally gets to within... Yep, yeah, gets to within four hexes of me, which is exactly what I need to see. Because then I can get... Uh, yeah, one hit in. End my turn. And then, yeah, get another pair of hits in. Now it's just luck of the draw. Got a hit in for seven. That's not bad. I think he's got ten. Okay, now... Now he gets to attack me. Back off and... Okay, darn it, poisoned again. That's less good. Two. Come on. Come on, John. We can do this. And down two. Actually, it was only like one hit. Then that was, yeah, two hit points again. Not bad. 32. 32. Bloody hell, John. Shape up. We were getting good at this. There we go. Number one, it goes down. End the combat. Well, at this point, I'm poisoned. I may as well take out the other one. And I'll help myself to yet more tails, thank you. Right, one, two, three, four. And stab, miss, end turn. And second turn, two stabs. 32%. 32%. Haven't hit it once yet. Not a good start, but they could only hit me like once. The damage range is, I just got hit for six. That's not fun. 32%. 32%. Run, run, run. Okay, I'm about to be killed by this scorpion, aren't I? No, you missed. And continue 32 percenting. Okay, this is just not good luck right now. All right, I should have hit it at least once by this point. Luckily, he's missing too. <laughs> We're both so bad at our jobs. All right, he got another hit in, but then I got a big critical, which is good. So, 11 hit points kills it in one, which is very lucky. But at this point, the poison is about to murder me. So, I'm really, really hoping that this is a really, really good chest. Because the poison could literally kill me at this point. So, come on chest. Oh, that is literally exactly what I wanted to see. That is perfect. That is absolutely spot on. Right, so, poison... And, uh, yeah, just a bit of healing too. That should get me up to, like, 16. Ouch. Okay, so I'm guessing that the healing powder is also a damage range. In fact, hang on, 16. Was that less than what I started with? I think I started with 80. So, okay, I've managed to lose two hit points coming in this direction. But that's fine, because I'm going to give another go to first aiding myself. 16% first aid. So... I am so flipping useless. Also, no. No, I don't take damage from poison. I'm not poisoned. Okay, I feel screwed over there, game. I feel very screwed over. Okay, here we go. Cameron is waiting for me. And by the way, can I actually... Uh, no, it's a pot, but I can't get anything out of it. Cameron, why are you here? Because I'm a little bit suspicious of your presence in the Temple of Trials. Greetings, John. I have the honour of being your final challenge. To continue your quest, you must defeat me in unarmed combat. When you say unarmed, you're clearly holding some form of spear, and so am I. So yes, I've got some questions. And what would you like to know? And why do we have to fight? Yes, are we planning to kill each other or not? So no, my friend, you need only defeat me. When the time comes, we will end the battle. That's good. And when you say unarmed, do you actually mean unarmed or a melee weapon's fine? Uh, yes, weapons tend to distances from battle and desensitize the effects of our actions against others. When you strike another human being with your bare fist, you both see and feel the pain you cause. Battles become very personal and all too real. Okay, the thing is, actually, I'm terrible at unarmed combat. Like, really, really flipping terrible. Um, is there any chance I can, like, speech my way past this? So, uh, yes, why do we have to fight? The path of the Chosen One is not an easy trail to walk, John. You'll be faced with many challenges throughout your lifetime. The most difficult of these will be dealing with your fellow man. These will come in a time when diplomacy and tact will prove useless, and your hand must be raised instead. This challenge prepares you to face another human, look him in the eyes, and know you may have to kill him. You literally just told me we weren't fighting to the death. Alright, don't tell me that if this is a challenge about me learning how to potentially fight someone to the death. And I disagree with you. I think we can piece this, okay? Let's piece this out. You may be correct, John, but not in your current situation. You must defeat me to succeed in your trial. Look, I don't know all of your strengths and weaknesses, and you don't know mine. Accidents do happen, so what if one of us inadvertently kills the other? Let's just end this now rather than take the chance. 
Yes, speech. I see your point. I wouldn't want to be responsible for killing you when all I meant to do is test your metal. Very well. You may pass, Chosen One. I'm guessing that was a speech check. The game is like rolling checks behind the scenes all the time. It's not like New Vegas where you can see what skill level you need to pass or Fallout 3 where it shows you percentage chance to succeed. In this case, it all happens very quietly behind the scenes. So thanks, Cameron. See you back in the village. Job flipping done. Now, he did say that was the end of the actual trial. So in which case, let's just open up the door and... Presumably, we actually get ourselves something. Hello? Ah, the vault suits. Cool. I like that. I have gained 600 XP, I have gone a level, I have gained 15 karma, and I have passed the Trials of Arroyo. Absolutely flippin' marvellous. And are those giant Venus flytraps? I see a plant of Dark Soul. Oh, that's great. That's just great. I love plants of Dark Soul. They're my favourite kind. And there we go. I am literally wearing the Vault 13 jumpsuit. Marvellous. Except I've made a few alterations to be honest, because, yeah, it was just established in the intro that the canonical Vault 13 Vault Dweller was, in fact, male. But I seem to have actually torn open the Vault suit a bit to expose a bit more cleavage, which I guess makes sense, given, you know, I have decided to actually roleplay my character as a high sex appeal character, so... <laughs> Screw it. I've decided I want to go out into the wasteland with a Vault suit, with two spears, and with some cleavage on show, and why not, eh? And here we go, 16 skill points I can now start distributing. Flipping lovely. Together with, yeah, needing another 1,600 experience to get up to the next level. So, what's my priority for the time being? I wouldn't mind a bit more melee because I literally don't have a gun yet. So, I feel like, yeah, that could potentially be a very useful thing to boost up. My speech isn't actually great yet, to be honest, but, uh... Do I want to actually get that higher? Oh yes, of course, if you've tagged a skill in the original Fallout, you actually get uh, two percentage points for each skill point you invest. So it doesn't just start higher, it's also easier to level up subsequently. Yeah, getting that up towards 40 seems like a good start to me. Other than that, Sneak has served me well so far. Definitely if I'm facing a particularly difficult situation, being able to sneak past it, not bad in the slightest, and... Uh, would I mind an extra six points of melee? Right now I've got literally nothing but melee weapons and I don't know how long it's going to be until I get a gun. So screw it. I'm just going to take an extra 6% in melee just in case. Ah, here we go. Here's Cameron floating around outside. So it's good to see you again, Chosen One. How may I help you? I'd like to visit the temple again. Oh, I really flipping don't want to actually. And I don't want to fight. I just thought I'd say hi. See you later. That's okay. Are these plants going to attack me? Like, can I actually speak to them? This is just a plant of the Dark Soul. Does it attack me if I get close? Yes! Yes, it flipping does! Okay, and it really flipping hurts too. Right, let's actually just like kill this if we can, please. Yeah, up to 40% chance to hit. I'm glad we're up to 40% chance to hit. So that's 10 hit points of damage to that thing. It looks... Oh, it's wounded. Okay, I think I may have made a mistake attacking this thing. This thing is apparently super badass. And then avoid. Avoid. I should not have attacked. Wow, another 11 hit points of damage. Severely wounded. Okay. I. We should run. Run. It's only a Venus flytrap. Presumably it can't actually get to me. Camera. Would you mind helping, please? I'm being attacked by a plant. So, we're at the very north of the village of Arroyo right now. We've got ourselves, yeah, the little green transition zones around over there. Let's just actually skirt around the outside of the kill plant. And are you actually about to attack me? Okay. Just, you know, skirt around the outside of the plants. I can't be bothered with this business. End the combat if you'd be so kind. Uh, yep, yeah, just keep your distance from those bastards. Thank you. And we have got ourselves... Uh, ah, Medical tent. I'm guessing that symbol is still meaning medicine. Hello, who are you? Before you stands Hakunin, the village shaman. He appraises you with crazy eyes from somewhere in the world only he inhabits. Why does the earth before me warm to the touch of your passing? 
Ooh, la -dee da You get animation and voice acting. That's flipping marvellous. So I can say goodbye because I'm leaving on a holy quest. I'm heading out. I was hoping just this once you'd talk like a real person. You're doing way too many drugs. I'm out of here. I'm hurt. Can you heal me? Yes, that'd be good. Because if you're like the doctor, I could do with a full health bar before I head out into the world. And... Spot on! That is absolutely great. Thank you very, very much indeed. Please reveal to clouded eyes the purpose of your passage. I've just come to say goodbye, whoever you are. The earth sings with the news of a champion upon the land. Perhaps before you go, you would bestow a kindness? Depends how many XP are in it for me, but sure, what do you need? The plants of Dark Soul have infested my garden again. Many seasons have touched my bones, and I am too frail for the fight which is eternal in nature. I ask that you be my champion. All right, that's actually possible. Yes, did you just ask me to weed your garden? If that's the case, that's fine. And yeah, okay, I'm happy to do that. Abso flipping lootly. I would be honoured to, holy one. So I'll do that, get some XP. Maybe they'll drop some like herbs or whatever. No idea. All right, let's get that done for him. Straight up to these plants over here. Can you even attack me? Are you trying to spit at me? I don't know if you're trying to spit at me. He might be trying to do a spit attack. Get right up close and personal. 38%. And I missed. Right, end my turn, but I might get a second turn if I'm lucky. Oh, hang on. I think I'm a bit too close to that one. Fine, move over here and then get two hits in. There's a hit for 11. There is... There's a hit for five. And that should hopefully get him to... Yeah, he's almost dead. That's good. End my turn. And he comes for a swing. These guys are not that strong. They've got surprisingly long range on them, though. 34. And miss again. That's a shame. And yeah, these guys seem to have really, really low damage, actually. That's absolutely fine. Right, come on. Just swing at them. You can do this. They're literally rooted to the ground. How are you struggling? I love how everyone else is just standing around watching this happen, by the way. No one else can be bothered to get involved. They must think I'm a right proper mug to be doing this for the shaman. Ah, right. Bloody finally. We've managed to take out all of the plants in the garden. The plants of the Dark Soul are indeed spore plants that they seem to refer to themselves. So, end the combat. I'm half dead from doing gardening, which is, you know, always a good starting point to a great big adventure. Nothing to actually be gathered off any of those bastards, so that's absolutely fine. Come back over here. I really hope he's planning to heal me again, by the way, because, uh, yeah, apparently I can't handle gardening. Ah, you return the spirit of the dweller to the world and bring a smile to the soul of an old man in passing. For this, I give you powders of healing. Remember, they fog the mind as they cleanse the body. All right, and yeah, as we know, perception minus one for healing. But I don't have any stim packs or anything yet, so screw it, it's pretty good. And also, will I mix the Brock flower with the Xander root together whenever you bring both to me? May your pathways be true and your heart follow suit. He said the Sunny Smiles thing! Or to be precise, Sunny Smiles said the him thing! I didn't know that was a callback to Fallout 2, but okay, there we flipping are! Any chance you can actually tell me where I find these things? Look to the north, Chosen, and the way will be open. Alright, head north, find things, bring them to him. Got it. No, 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 we're not done. You're flipping healing me, alright? There we flipping go. Better. Right, time to have an explore around, see who, if anybody, wants to have a nice chat. So I see my- ah, I've got a cousin. This is my cousin, Nagor. You don't see his dog smoke anywhere. By any chance, you need me to go and get your bloody dog. Where's your dog, Nagor? Smoke ran off into the hunting grounds and hasn't come back, and now Morlis won't let me go find him. She says it's too dangerous and he's just a dog and I was going to go anyway. Ooh, 100% I'm going to go rescue a dog, yes. Far side of Hakunin's tent, north of the village. I'll be back with the dog momentarily. Unless there's bad things there, in which case I probably won't be. 
These little quests are totally worth doing, because if I can hit level 3 before I even set off on my adventure, that will be much better. And any of these quests might actually give me things like, you know, a gun. Ah, and we've got geckos floating around. Yeah, this is feeling very New vegas -y, isn't it? We've got Xanderoot and Brockflower being mixed together by one of the first characters you run into. We've got geckos right at the start. Yep, you can see the inspiration here. I have located Smoke. He's over there, but he seems to be absolutely fine. So all I need to do is, uh, yeah, work my way past. It looks like only two geckos are in the way. I can ignore the third one down south. All right, let's see how tough a gecko is, because I've no bloody clue. Right, let's go, you and me, and... Okay, I've just accidentally snuck up on a gecko. Didn't even really mean to. 33%. Total miss. Okay, 33%. And... Did four hit points. Okay, he is wounded. That's fine. Uh, back off a little bit. I'm gonna... Uh-oh. Oh, the other one's coming in. How much damage can they do to me? Two hit points. That seems low. 27%. Okay, these guys have got slightly higher armor class or something than enemies I've been fighting so far. Right, back away from that one that's running over here. They seem to have a fair few movement points. But they're not great hitting me and they're not... That strong, but I'm struggling to hit them too. Continue backing off. I don't want to be fighting two at once. I could get swarmed very, very fast indeed. And uh, come on, I'm I'm struggling here. I'm really struggling. We might need to come back later with better quality equipment or like a companion or something. Because I'm feeling like I've not really got the ability to do gecko hunting right now. Though, admittedly, they're not... Doing anything to me either. Right, that was a hit, but only for three hit points. He's wounded, still not severely wounded, which is a concern because I'm about to be completely surrounded by them. Another hit for eight, and that's pretty good for me. He's only severely wounded. I think we need to come back here once we've actually got ourselves some, you know, better quality equipment. This spear, not for me. Not good for gecko hunting. All right, back to the village. Who else needs some help? Ah, and I've located the elder of the village. She's right by the well and the skull pole. So remember, she's there. All right, ransack the entire village because, you know, you never know when you're going to need some of this. Ooh, Xander root. I'll be having some of that. Thank you. I'm pretty sure I saw Brock Flower over in the hunting grounds. Uh, honestly, whatever you guys have got here, I need it more than you. All right, so I'll be helping myself to whatever I bloody well feel like. We've got a nephew, Fergus, here. Wow, the well really needs fixing. Well, luckily, I'm here, and I'm actually terrible at repairs, but I'll give it a flipping go. Oh, I'm so terrible at repairs. But... Okay, apparently I just got that done. You're welcome. Next up, Morlis, my aunt who hates me. That's good. Hello, Morlis. Why do you bother me, niece? Can't you see I'm busy? Yeah, that's a lot of standing around that wouldn't be getting done otherwise. You know what? I'm going to steal everything she flippin' owns and not even feel bad about it. She doesn't own anything worth stealing. Right, well, that's probably why she's annoyed all the time. Ooh, apparently we worship a big giant head. That's fun. I like a big giant head. Also, I'll have a quick word with Lucas here. So, chosen one, how goes the quest? Honestly, haven't really started it yet, but... I'm not dead, so good starting point. Maybe you need a warrior's help. Ooh, do you want to accompany me? Because yes, I need some help getting a dog back from a cousin. And uh, I know how to fight with fists and feet. Think you can learn that. Sure, teach me something. I can teach you enough to fight better. It will take us all of one day. Go for it. Assuming that doesn't mean the dog's dead. I really hope the dog's not dead. And you have learnt well, Chosen Warner. May the wind be at your back. Okay. Apparently, I've gained plus one perception three times. Does that mean I'm actually up to, like... No, I'm still at perception eight. Why am I still at perception... Ah! Was I down at perception five because I'd done, like, three healing powders and that's all worn off now? Probably that's what's going on, yes. Also, I don't know what my unarmed skill was before this point, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't as high as 55, so you know what? That'll flip and do. Oh, let's talk time limits, by the way. So, like Fallout 1, this game does kind of have a time limit, but not really in the same way, which is good because I never really liked the fact that you were on a time limit in Fallout 1. So, technically, you're supposed to be doing this in a hurry to save your village. But I did look into this. Any warnings the game gives you are basically just for flavor. To be honest, like, you've got to complete the main quest within 13 years. 
but there's no realistic chance you'll actually burn 13 years playing the game, so just play the game normally and ignore the time limit, which I'm very happy about. Here we go, Xanderoot and Brock Flower in this guy's house. Talk to him, he's twirling his spear. Any chance you can actually... Ah, the way you use a spear, you'll be meat for geckos in no time, I can show you a few tricks. Yes, I would love this. So take a little while. That's good. So, you're a swift student. It looks like you've learned all I can teach you. Thanks, Jordan. That's going to help a lot. All right, what did that actually do? Because I'm pretty sure I was at like 46%. Ah, plus 10%. Fine. So he's got my melee skill up to 56%. And I've got higher perception than I did previously. This, this is good. This is all good stuff. I'm glad I came and spoke to all of you. All right, Geckos, I'm back for a flippin' rematch. This time, I'm flippin' ready for ya. That's right. Come over here. Come over here. Come, come over here. Come over here. All right, fine. I'll just stab you, I guess. Right, go for... Oh, 43% chance to hit. That, that's the flippin' stuff right there. Yes, now back away from him. Let him come to me. He'll come for a swing at me. But now, now I've got my perception back. 37% chance to hit and... Oh, yeah. Now this, this is flipping good. And also, he critically missed and lost his next turn. Good. Good, good, good. So if I end my turn right now, do I get another turn immediately? Yes, I do. So critical misses. They're a thing. Uh, I need four action points. Attack. Okay, six. And bring him down. That's what we flipping needed right there. So, end the combat. Spot on, and now we can get the, I'm assuming, hide? Nope, no hide on him whatsoever. That's absolutely fine. So he's dead. There's, oh, there's two down there. Right, stay away from them. There is a Brock flower over there, but honestly, I can do without it. I'm just going to come straight through uh, round here. Take on this one. So you, excuse me, are you not, you're not interested in fighting? He's not interested in fighting, but okay. 43%, go for that, and that was a miss. 55% for a go. Eight hit points. Not bad as a starting point. Begin backing away from him. I think that's actually a Brock Flower over there. He comes in for a swing, but his damage range is low. Shaman can heal me at when we're done. Now, now we're doing some good stuff. Yeah, this is the stuff right here. There we go. He goes down. Bit unlucky there in terms of, yeah, just the actual uh, chance to hit. But grab the little Brock Flower right there and... Okay, end the combat, then pick up the Brock Flower. Whatever. There we go. That gives me two Brock Flowers and two Xander Roots. That's another two Healing Powder. Now, probably stay away from the, like, radioactive goo, which is apparently dotted around over here. Yep, loop round the long way. I was... Okay, I was hitting the radioactive goo. Don't walk on the radioactive goo. Maybe just, like, avoid that. Hello, Smoke. You're a good boy. Apparently I see nothing out of the ordinary with radioactive goo and slime pools just floating around outside my village. So that's unfortunate. Right, well, let's head on our way. Please don't walk through the radioactive goo. Smoke, same deal. Please don't walk through the goo. Thank you. Good work, Smoke. And the geckos are way over there. Don't need to fight every single gecko, to be honest. I'd rather make sure this dog makes it home nice and safe. You know, there's plenty of geckos dotted around here, but honestly... Aside from XP grinding, I don't see much point taking them all on. I think we're pretty good. I'd rather, yeah, get the XP for returning the dog. Because if the dog dies, that's probably a loss of XP. Greater than any gain I'll get from killing all of those geckos. And I've brought your dog back to you. You're flipping welcome. You found Smoke. Thanks, Smoke. You're a bad dog. And 5 karma, 100 XP. Beautiful. So, back to the Shaman. Get me some healing powder, please. That should be two healing powder. And, ooh, apparently it's night now. Speak to him again. I need some more healing. It might bring us to morning or close by. Thank you very, very much indeed. I'm all right. Goodbye. Okay, I think that means I have now stolen, done mini quests, and fixed everything I can actually do all of that stuff with. In which case, ooh. By any chance, can I help myself to all of this stuff? Yeah, I'm just gonna help myself to uh, your chest, actually. Ooh, it's locked. Right, I'll speak to you first in case you're about to choose to give that to me. But if you don't, I'm just lockpicking it, FYI. Congratulations, Chosen One. You have survived the Temple of Trials. Are you ready for your quest? 
As long as my quest involves nothing but stabbing insects, yes, 100 flipping percent. So, any chance I could have a gun at this point? Then take this flask. It is from the Holy Vault 13. Vic, a trader in Klamath, brought it to us. He may know where the vault is. You may also need some of what they call money. Here. Alright, so money and a flask from Vault 13. Head to Klamath, find a person called Vic, show him the thing to prove I'm who I say I am, I guess, and then find the vault itself. Alright, so anything more you can tell me? I cannot help much. So much has been lost from the long ago. What wisdom do you seek? I feel like the society's regressed pretty quickly. Like, we're only a handful of generations after the Vault Dweller. And he was, you know, an extremely skilled badass who used guns and was a Vault Dweller and knew all sorts of exciting sexy tech stuff. But apparently, no, within two or three generations, we're into barbarians living in huts who have no concept of the idea of money. Alright, the biggest one. Klamath. Where is Klamath? Klamath is to the east. East. Useful to know. Thank you. What do you need? And do you actually know where the vault is? Because it sounds like that's my ultimate destination. The Holy Thirteen? I cannot help you. Only the vault dweller knew. His tales have the sound of a perilous journey. Okay, but if I can find any location from Fallout 1, I can roughly locate from that, because I know how the orientation of California works. So, uh, that'll be a good starting point. What do you need? And yes, finally, the Gek. Do you actually know what it is and what it does precisely? Because the Gek is kind of all-purpose plot filler. It kind of does whatever any given Fallout game needs it to do. It is a holy artifact. The Garden of Eden creation kit. The discs promise it will make our lands green and our village prosperous. It will save us. More? I do not know. Alright, fine. It just makes the land fertile. Got it. That'll do as a starting point. Pay attention. Find the Holy Vault 13 and bring back the Gek. Vic, the trader from Klamath, brought us the flask from the Holy 13. Start your search with him. The disc will remind you of your task. May the gods of the vault watch over you. Fine, that's all I'm getting from her. No arm and no weapons. Dear, oh flippin' dear. Right, well in that case, I need your stuff, actually. So, failed to pick the lock. I tell you what, I'm not bad at lock picking. I'm hoping I will be able to open this. Give it a few goes. There we go. Definitely pick it. 25 XP. Let's have a look, see what we got here. Gonna be needing your stuff. Aha! Now that, that's what I was wanting to be seeing. I've got myself some. I'll just have all of that, thank you. Have the healing powder. And I've also got a knife. Right. You don't mind that I've just stolen that, right? We're cool? Yeah, we're cool. Spot on. There was actually a knife right here. Okay, now I've just got two knives, but weapons tend to be very valuable in this game, so I can just sell them if need be. Alright, I think that's actually about everything I can do in the actual village. So, this knife is... Give me some information here. Sharp bladed cutting and stabbing weapon, minimum strength 2. Very light, all things considered. So, alright, move that over to here. So, spear, damage range of 3 to 11, range of 2. Knife damage only 1 to 7. Okay, what's the advantage in that case? There must be a point to it. I'm guessing it's lower AP cost. Yeah, I can get a swing of 3 in, which is good. Or a swing of 4 and thrust together with, yeah, normal and aim shot 2. So, I can actually get 3 attacks in by default with that thing. So, hang on, let's do some maths here. If this thing does damage of 1 to 7, and I can attack 3 times, then the average swing, assuming it hits at all, would be a 4. So 4 times 3, 12. The spear, meanwhile, I can only attack with twice. That would do an average damage of 7, if the range of 3 to 11 are all equally likely to show up, which I'm going to assume for now they are. So 2 times 7, 14. So the spear is the better option, and I'm guessing the reason you've got the knife is in case you don't have the strength to use the spear. So we're still all about the melee weapons, but on the plus side, at least I asked around and got a bit of training. So we're up to 56%
in melee, which will, uh, well, I guess it has to do, because we don't really have an option right now. My sex appeal isn't getting me too far yet. But you know what, ladies and gentlemen? I would say that is enough for now. This here is the beginning of Fallout 2. We have kicked off our adventure. We have done the Temple of Trials and... Okay, it was a little bit painful. It wasn't quite the nightmare worst Fallout level in all of history I was expecting from some of the horror stories I've heard. I mean, I see why it's a bad Fallout level, because Fallout levels should be all about giving you options and different ways of doing things, and you can sneak or fight or talk or diddly diddly d. I mean, there was a bit of that, I suppose, because you could use stealth quite effectively to grab stuff out of the chest without actually engaging in combat, and you were able to talk down that guy without fighting him directly, so that was good. But yeah, I can see how it is just a quite long period of stabbing bugs in the face. And if you happen to not be well set up to stab things in the face, you're going to have a bit of a difficult time of it. Yes, abso flipping lootly. So, not the strongest Fallout opening, but not the disaster I was fearing. So, I'll take that as a win, quite frankly. Next week, ladies and gentlemen, our journey begins in full. We are heading east, looking for Klamath and somebody called Vic who apparently might be able to point us towards Vault 13, which, if we're lucky, we'll have a Gek, because of course not all Vaults have Geks. We know that from the future. Some Vaults have Geks, some don't. So uh, we're probably going to need to find the right Vaults to make that work, ladies and gentlemen. Our adventure continues next Sunday, of course. This is our brand new series, and uh, it's good to be back. It is good to be back in classic old-school Fallout RPG territory. I hope you join me for the rest of this journey, ladies and gentlemen, because I am very, very much looking forward to it. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been Many a True Nerd, and this has been Fallout 2. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Ah, we have got a gate key here, and then we have got ourselves... I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! I've made a mistake! This is going to take all of my skill and cunning as a hunter to sort out... Die, you moving bastards! Die! Die! Go, go away. Go away, nobody likes you. That was a good idea till it wasn't.